not shocked by my first wet dream. I'm something like 12 years old, it's the 70s, and I have taken this controversial new class called sex ed. I know about sex, the mechanics of it anyway. So my first wet dream is no surprise. What has me completely gobsmacked is the fact that my first wet dream is about Ned, the nerdy boy with the chipped front tooth that lives around the corner. To call this a dream doesn't do it justice. I can see, hear, feel, I can feel what's happening. And let me tell you, what's happening is fucking amazing. <laughs> Stuff I'd maybe heard of, but couldn't quite convince myself that two people actually do together. Here's a snippet of real dialogue from that dream. 12-year-old me. Just let me put in the tip. Ned. Okay, but if I don't like it, you have to stop. Have you maybe had that conversation? <laughs> yep, I'm 12 years old and I am a top. <laughs> but here's the thing. Until that dream, I have no idea that I am attracted to Ned. I have no fucking clue that I am gay. Surprise. <laughs> I try to convince myself that my dream is a fluke. You hear that sometimes. Young men early in puberty go through phases. But my dreams, man, they are this whole other realm of creatively carnal, electrically erotic, delightfully depraved, toe-curling intensity. And when the time comes for the wet part of the dream, I do not just dribble, I shoot like a pistol. Pow, 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 pow! I could change the channel on my TV set from across the room. And I'm really sorry to the people over here. All of my wet dreams are about men. Except one, which is about Cher. <laughs> I have a dream about John, the tall blonde kid who lives on Fernwood Drive, which is followed by a dream about Ron, a bully at my school who completely terrifies me but is also fucking gorgeous which is followed by a dream about Tom, who is one of the few jocks at my school, which is, who is actually a sweet guy, which is followed by a dream about Mr. Poupard, the gym teacher with the light brown chest hair that shows when he wears a tank top, which is followed by a dream, 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 which is... They don't stop. Faggot. Queer boy, homo, fairy. These are names I have been called all my life. And the dreams make me realize that the people calling me those names are right. This would be challenging enough, but there's a complication. I'm 12 years old and the Lord Jesus Christ is my personal savior. I am an active member of the charismatic movement, which is how born-agains, which is how Catholics do born-again Christianity. So that means I go to prayer meetings, I sing in tongues, and I know without question that every word of the Bible is literally true. In fact, pretty much everything any born-again Christian says is unquestionably right, especially if they say it in a prayer meeting Super especially if they say it in a King James way. If thou art a man, thou shalt not covet the pleasures of other manly flesh, lest thou be tossed into the pit of a thousand tribulations and agonies. Kind of like that. <laughs> I'm 12 years old. How did I become such a sinner? How did I become so ungodly? How did I bring this on myself? And most importantly, 
How do I make the dreams go away? Can things get any worse? <laughs> yeah, they can actually. My mom develops a friendship with Kathy. She's real tall, like 5'10", broad-shouldered as a linebacker. She's got a heavily pockmarked face, dyed black hair, combed into a Laura Petri flip, and she smokes Salem cigarettes. The woman smokes cigarettes named after a city famous for its vicious witch notes. That's a red flag. <laughs> she and my mother get real close real fast. So close that Kathy feels it's within her rights to criticize me. Hmm. Actually, Kathy feels it's within her rights to criticize anyone at any time for anything. I think she sees it as her mission. The first conversation I ever have with her goes like this. Frank, the Lord Jesus has given me a message for you. He does not like that shirt you're wearing. She's talking about a t-shirt that my sister gave me for my birthday. It has an image of a flying eyeball on the chest. That shirt is of the devil, and you should burn it. You want to know what's sad? I do it. I burn it. So, here's the truth about Kathy. She is a horrible, miserable, angry, vindictive, spiteful woman. She's probably starved for love, affection, and orgasms. She gossips viciously. I have seen her try to turn our entire prayer community against one of its members, a really sweet, wonderful, named, wonderful woman named Pat, who is wonderful and caring and loving and all the things a Christian should be. I've heard Kathy say demeaning and degrading things to my mother, to myself, to any number of people. The sadistic bitch is clearly fucked up, so why does anybody listen to her? I'll tell you why. Kathy knows her audience. She carries a tattered Bible in her purse. She pulls it out and lays it on the table next to her coffee cup where she holds it in her lap when she talks. She doesn't read from it. She just kind of has it as a prop. Her prissy cruelty is masterfully disguised as Christian concern. Whenever she shreds someone for singing too pretty, or laughing too loud, or being too kind to their grandmother, and by the way, all three of those things are actual criticisms I've heard her make. Whenever Kathy guts you and leaves you bleeding, she always prefaces it with, the Lord Jesus has given me a message for you. Oh, but wait, there's more. Kathy can tell in an instant when something is of the devil. For instance, one warm spring day, I come home from school, and there is a roaring fire in the fireplace. My mom and Kathy are throwing things into it. Kathy told my mother that any artistic representation of an owl or a frog are of the devil. Why? Simple. Owls and frogs are the only animals in all of creation that hunt at night. <laughs> wrong, 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 that's so wrong! There are tons of animals that hunt at night. But, if a born again says it, it's got to be true. So I force myself to believe something I know is bullshit. It turns out the hunting at night thing turns artistic representations of owls and frogs, not the animals themselves, go figure, just the representations of them, into little portals that allow Satan entrance into your home. <laughs> Naturally, my mom and Kathy went through the entire house and collected every frog and owl they could find, a plastic froggy soap dish, a drawing of a bunch of owls on a branch with the last one hanging upside down and the words, nobody's perfect. <laughs> they feed that tacky crap into the fire, they say a few prayers, and bam, they slam the door on Satan. 
Sounds sensible, right? But evil spirits are really tricky. They can find all kinds of ways into your life. Another time, I come home from school, and Gloria is there too. It's not just Kathy and my mom. Gloria is a very sweet Italian lady who wears her hair in a kind of low-key buffant, even though it's the 70s and everybody else is doing the blow-dry thing. Gloria is sitting in the middle of the family room, holding my mom's spaghetti pot in her lap. Gloria and my mom, Kathy and my mother stand behind her with their hands on their shoulders. Everyone has their eyes squeezed shut and everyone's praying, but man, there is this weird crackling energy to this particular prayer session. My mom and Kathy are singing in tongues real loud and real fast, and Gloria is rocking back and forth in her chair, moaning and groaning like she's going to be sick at her stomach. All of a sudden, Kathy says, In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bind you with the word of God, and I command you, evil spirit, come out of Gloria. Whoa. An actual exorcism in my family room. Neat. <laughs> Gloria throws back her head and she opens her mouth and her voice, wow, I will come out, I will come out, I will come out, and I will go into the child. <laughs> Freaked your ass out, didn't I? Imagine how I felt. Because in that case, I was the child. Then Gloria pukes. Not a lot, not projectile, not Linda Blair Green, but yeah, Gloria pukes in my mom's spaghetti pot. So that's fucked up. <laughs> I sprint out of there, but I make the mistake of going to my room instead of outside. I hear the entire rest of the exorcism, only it's muffled by two by fours and drywall, and that's worse. It makes that walls of our house seem like flimsy protection for an evil spirit who's just announced he's gunning for me. I mean, how do I defend myself against that? I do the only thing I can think of. My mom keeps extra crucifixes in a drawer in the guest room. Yes, I live in a house with a drawer full of extra crucifixes. I prop one of them above the door frame and another one above the window. I put a Bible on the heating vent. But is that enough? I mean, should I stuff a towel under the door? Can terry cloth stop a demon? <laughs> and then how do I know when it's safe to come out? Will it ever be safe to come out? Will it ever be safe anywhere? Like, what do I do? That is one long afternoon. And the night that comes afterward is even longer, and it's sleepless, and it's scary, and it is really fucking lonely. So, I don't know if you've noticed, but Kathy, pretty awesome, right? And she's gonna do me one more little favor. Kathy's gonna give me one more little gift. Still another time, I come home from school, and I find Kathy sitting in the kitchen, her tattered Bible is on the table right between her Salem cigarettes and her cup of coffee. It's a lazy afternoon for her. She's not burning any evil drawings of owls and frogs, and she's not casting out any demons. She's just having coffee. I walk past the kitchen, and Kathy says to my mother, You know, homosexuality is not just a sin. It is of the devil. The gays are not just sinners. They are possessed by the demon of homosexuality. Kathy just answered a lot of questions for me. Now I know why I am such a freak. Now I know why I'm so miserable. Now I know why I am always failing my parents, failing at school, failing God. Now I know I am always failing. I am possessed by a demon. <laughs> That's me. 
Shortly after this, Kathy moves away, and my mom loses tra track of her, so that's the last little bit of spiritual venom that Kathy spits in my direction. But it is a doozy. This may shock you, but believing in your heart of hearts that you are possessed by a devil does not set you up for a happy life. It sets you up for a lot of agonizing struggle. I try so fucking hard to be a good Christian. I try even harder not to be gay. Pointless. It takes a lot of years, but eventually, I accept what I am. I am queer. I am queer. Fucking A, I am queer. First I accept this, then I embrace it, and then I fall in love with it. When I do, my Christianity falls away, and it's like pulling out a baby tooth. There's a twinge of pain, and then this thing that was small and brittle and had been a part of me for far too long is gone. And it gets replaced by something big and strong and me. I don't quite look like that right now. So flash forward to now. I just turned 55. Woohoo! Scott Ehrlich. Scott Ehrlich, a glorious, generous, thoughtful, caring, sexy man who is far better than I deserve, has been my partner for 30 awesome years. And did this. We are married. We have been since 2014. I live an imperfect but mostly wonderful life. But sometimes I look back on the time when I struggled so fucking hard to be something I wasn't. When I was certain I was spiritually doomed. Sometimes I look back on the people who made that time so much harder than it, need, than it needed to be. Sometimes, I look back on Kathy, and I realize I have something I want to say to her, and it's this. Fuck you, Kathy! <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> I'm going to ask all of you to say that with me in a minute. Because I know something about you. I know every person here has a Kathy in their life. Some mean-spirited, pinched little bitch. Some man or woman who stepped on you, squashed you, or held you down. And I also know that a lot of these Kathys are dead, so we're going to have to be really loud for them to hear us. <laughs> we'll do it together when I count three, but first, a little bit of preparation. I don't want you to forget your line, so... And get your guns ready. <laughs> One, two, three. Fuck you, Kathy! <laughs> Fuck you! Woohoo! Thank you.